great to be here with Monty Hall in his new Great Escapes um, venue in Dartmouth. Um, I know the town are absolutely thrilled you're here, Monty. <laughs> oh, thank you. And um, we've been enjoying following you in the, in the last month where you know, some exciting things have been happening. Uh, Love Dartmouth is all about um, showcasing the talents and passions of people in Dartmouth. And it's great when somebody like you arrives with a, a fresh set of talents and passions. Um, so be really interested to know, well, first of all, welcome. Thank you very much. From Thank the you. Department. But Thank also, you. perhaps you could explain where you came from, how you got here, what, what brought you to Dartmouth. Yeah, oh, it's been a very long roundabout journey, really. I mean, over, literally over the last just five years, it's been... West Coast of Scotland, now to Hebrides, West Coast of Ireland, Australia, Bristol, Cornwall, um, various filming projects yeah. around the place. But I think the seed was originally planted for me of, of this sort of passion for Dartmouth when I was here as a Marines officer. Uh, I was the physical training officer up at the college. Oh, okay. Uh, when and were that, you there? That was uh, 95, 96. Mm. And, uh, but lived down in the town and played rugby for the club and all that and just fell in love with the place as everyone does I think who comes to Dartmouth yeah. and we searched everywhere me and Tam searched we knew we wanted to settle in the South Hams and we searched everywhere in the South Hams but for some reason I didn't show her Dartmouth <laughs> and we looked for months and months and then suddenly I thought oh of course you know Dartmouth yeah. and as we drove down the hill into Dartmouth um Tam turned to me and said, well, why haven't you shown me this place before? This is obviously where we're going to live, you know. Um, so, yeah, and it's, it's been brilliant ever since we've settled here. We've, we've just loved it. And did you have the concept for Great Escapes prior to moving to Dartmouth? Well, not really. I had this idea of sort of setting up a shop and drinking coffee and, uh, you know, nattering to my mates and going out in the rib and yeah. doing some wildlife survey work along the coast. And it sort of evolved very swiftly from there, and we're still evolving. We're mm -hmm. still... We've got an idea of what we're running. And I say we, because it's myself, Lucy and Andy who are mm. all running it together. And um, we've got an idea of what we're doing. Things like wildlife trips yeah. for people, things like wildlife lectures. We've done a few of those, been very successful and been very popular. Um, and shore walks for families. Mm. And it's really trying to connect people to the amazing natural environment around Dartmouth. Yeah. So what is the passion that really drives... You. Oh, I, I you think, the man. Yeah, I think it's uh, epitomised in, in the business, really. Yeah. And that's getting out there in the boat, along the cliffs, exploring the coves, diving, underwater photography, introducing people to the wildlife. Mm. We grossly underestimate, and we all do it, I'm the same as anyone. You think you have to go overseas for exotic, wonderful wildlife. And yeah. There's 21 species of shark off yeah. Dartmouth. There's 24 species of whale around the coast of the UK. Mm. There's the second largest fish on earth. Skulls passed, you know, as we did basking yeah. sharks, things yeah. like that. Uh, extraordinary bird life, and all that sort of stuff. So the idea is to gradually get to know that over the next few years for me personally mm. and introduce as many people to it as I can. Mm. Will you be working with children in Dartmouth? Yes, yeah. yeah I love doing um, shore walks and things with kids. You always mm. get a great reaction. We're all, everyone's a kid on a shore walk. Mm. You can be 90 and you're, yeah. you're like a six-year-old when you do a short walk. You get all excited and fired up. And I've already had a chat with the Dartmouth Academy, and they kindly invited me up and said, um, um, and said, um, yeah, you know, want to do yeah. some work with the kids and uh, talk to them about leadership and team dynamics and the wildlife Excellent. and things. So, Thanks. yes. Um, great to hear you're working with, with children, mm. young people. Um, just wondering, what form does that take, Monty? Um, well, basically, at the moment, I'm chatting to the Academy about going up and doing some uh, kind of leadership training, some yeah. team building stuff with them. Because, again, the background is with the Royal Marines in expeditions and working with wildlife film crews around the world. And um, you end up with this uh, a fair amount of experience of teams yeah. under stress and leadership. And one of the other things we're doing here is a bit of corporate training as well so groups come down from companies and um we're working with the rally estates and also obviously we've got the rib the fast boat so we take them out along the coast and do all sorts of team building stuff with them and um it's an evolving thing it's very we're still very very new in dartmouth mm. obviously obviously you've got to live here for 180 years before you can possibly be telling oh, the local i think <laughs> um but um we're very very new here and we're relying 100 percent on uh, the goodwill of local people and mm. the advice that everyone's giving us. And I'm happy to say that everyone's just been so welcoming and has been really forthcoming with that advice. Mm. So. Wonderful. Mm. 
Um, and what really excites you about the future? What what do you what can you see of the future that uh, really? I, I think Dartmouth. You know, I, I can talk on a personal level and a business level. You know, Dartmouth for me and my family has just been the, one of the best decisions we've ever made. Mm. And we know that already. Yeah. Oh, really? We <laughs> we feel so welcome here, and everyone's mm. been so nice and accommodating. And um, you know, it's cut us plenty of slack as we've been trying to find our feet here. And uh, there's nothing finer than a Sunday, you know, doing a bit with the lifeboats and then a bit of the gigs and then you know paying appalling cricket um for the shipping dock i'm a shipping dock man when it comes to cricket and you know that's what this place is all about i think this wonderful community and um all built around the river as well and i think that's a lovely thing wonderful place for little isla to grow up so personally it's really exciting to be here but professionally as well i think there's potentially huge you know the, the business could really expand i yeah. think yeah and um as i said we're still finding our feet we're trying to just do three or four things well at mm. this stage, very mm. early days. But the potential, I think, is huge mm. for the corporate training, for introducing people to the environment, for running the wildlife tours. And I can't think of a better place to do it than Dartmouth. Fantastic. So, Monty, when people come to Dartmouth or when people are exploring where they want to stay mm. in the South Hounds and they come on holidays, what is it that they can actually sign up for, that they can do, that they can participate in? Well, um, the first thing is they can come in and say hello and have a yeah. natter uh, and buy one of our reasonably priced and highly amusing books or DVDs. Um, but uh, it, the more tangible stuff, if you want a day out in Dartmouth, yeah. we're doing boat trips along the coast mm. and uh, that's in the rib. Uh, so it's uh, small groups, kind of eight people at a time, and we're pushing up around the Muse Stone, going to see the Grey Seals there, and then pushing up towards Berry Head or down to Blackpool Stone. So covering a fair amount of coastline. So presumably, when you're in the rib, you can get very close. Yes, you to can. The, yeah, you're quite line. low in the water, and um, it's quite. Lots of the coast uh, becomes very accessible to you, partly because the boat can cover large yeah. swathes of the coast. It's a fast boat, yeah. but also it's a quite a small boat, so you can mm. get in really close to mm. the Guillemot colonies and mm. the cormorants and all the other great stuff that we've got along mm. here. So there's that side. We've got uh, shore walks as well, uh, where myself or we've got a marine biologist working for us will take the family for a shore walk along mm. the beach. And um, it's, it's really accessible. That we do at Castle Cove and Sugary Cove. There's so much to see there at low yeah. tide. Yeah. And the lovely thing about that is you're never more than about 200 metres away from a cream tea as well, which yes. is a crucial <laughs> part of, of any shore walk as far as I'm concerned. And we do slightly. And where do you have the cream tea? Oh, at the, in the Castle Calf. Absolutely. You know, we. Um, <laughs> Uh, but um, yeah, and, and then uh, slightly larger scale things, mm. that, uh, things we do, something called the Ultimate Taste of Devon, where we go on a boat trip and then we drop people off on a beach uh, with a marine biologist and they do a shore walk with them and then we have a hamper full of just local produce, local oh, cheeses from local farms, clotted cream crab from the boats, mm. all that. We have a big picnic on the beach and then we walk five miles along the coast path home with the marine biologist. So they do a kind of nature walk as well. Um, so those are really the three core products that we're doing, but obviously we're doing dive trips as well, yeah. wildlife lectures, we're running a wildlife guides course at the moment. In a nutshell, if you're interested in the wildlife of South Devon, yeah. just stick your head around the door and we'll have something for you. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. And what age groups do you prefer to work with? Um, ideally, um, naught to about 120. <laughs> though, though that's our kind of age limit. We'll find something for, I took Isla on a little shore walk the other day and she's six months old mm. and just love, of course she just loved it, you know, kelp and splashing in rock mm. pools and things like that. And, um, you know, pretty much something for everyone. The only thing I'd say is with the boat, we do have a um, lower age limit on the boat. Um, just in terms of our insurance, and, and that's, uh, that's seven. Yeah. Um, as in terms of you know, and I've, I can't remember the exact uh, parameters, but basically seven and under. Unfortunately, mm. we can't take mm. on the boat. But beyond that, anyone, yeah. anyone, and everyone. Okay. Monty, um, aware that you've signed yourself up for the RNLI to yeah. help on the lifeboat that we yeah. have in Dartmouth, could you? Tell us all about that because I know it, it's wonderful work they do. And you, yeah, you yeah, understand. it's um, you know, it's a very. I think it's one of the greatest things anyone can do is to volunteer to put their life at risk to save someone else. Hmm. 
and um, I hasten to add, I'm just driving the tractor, so I don't, I don't go out on the boat. I'm too old to go out on the boat. Are you? Yes. Maximum age of 45, and I'm 45. So, uh, yes. Um, so I'm hardly personally putting my life at risk. But in 2010, the RNLI around the coast of the UK saved 22 people a day. A day? Yeah. So uh, it's staggering. You know, we are a maritime nation. We have a very intense relationship with the sea. You know, we use it for our recreation. We use it to feed ourselves. We use it for work and whatever. And, and, and inevitably, when you have that many people involved with the sea, things are occasionally going to go wrong. Yeah. And almost invariably, you know, it's volunteers, whether that's Coast Watch or whether that's RNLI, you know, who end up going out and actually, you know, uh, fishing people out of the, out of the drinks. Yeah. So um, for a community like Dartmouth, that's so intricately linked to the sea, mm. the RNLI is, I know every time I go out with a group of people in my boat, it's just this safety net that I know if it all goes horribly wrong, mm. I can just get on the radio and mm. good men mm. will come out and, and bring me back. Mm. Mm. And uh, for anyone who uses the sea, that's, that's mm. a great thing. So we should all be very proud of the RNLI, I think. Yeah. Plus yeah. our college. Which of course yes, is yeah. Well, again, this intense uh, link with the Navy, this mm. is, uh, you know, Dartmouth, again, should be very proud of that mm. naval link. It's a world-renowned training facility on, up the hill there. And um, uh, I'm obviously an ex-Royal Marine. Mm. And so the other charity for me that's a really big one, uh, the RNLI, I'm, I'm keen to support. Fisherman's Mission is the other one mm. from the Fisherman's Apprentice. But there's a thing called the Royal uh, Marines Charitable Trust Fund, which is trying to raise six million quid in the next four years to treat wounded Royal Marines. Mm -hmm. The Royal Marines take a disproportionate level of casualties because of the work they do yes. compared to the rest of the armed forces. They've taken more casualties mm. per per man, as it yeah. were, than uh, the rest of the armed forces. So there's a special fund set up to raise money for them. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a few talks in town to to raise money for, I think, a very, very worthy cause. Fantastic. Well, thanks for talking to us today, Monty. And My pleasure. We hope to be following Monty, Monty on his adventures in Dartmouth and so on Love Dartmouth. Follow our channel and you'll see more of Monty's um, adventures. Thanks, Monty. No worries. My misadventures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.